In this video, we are going to look at a displacement time graph and use it to estimate average velocity and average acceleration. So let's go. Let's read the question. Oh, define velocity and acceleration. So when it comes to definition, we have very, very specific way of writing this. So when you think of velocity v, immediately you should think of rates. So you should be able to recall that v is ds dt. Or in other words, this is known as rate of change of displacement. If you want to write displacement over time, it is less accurate. So it's a hit or miss. Sometimes they give you mark, sometimes they don't give mark. So it's better to be safe. Write rates because that is the actual definition. Acceleration. So you know how SVA is related because you've watched the lecture video. Okay. So we are looking at rates throughout these three uh, variables. So the rate of this one, you differentiate S, you get V. You differentiate V, you get A. So this means acceleration will be the rate of change of velocity. How quickly your velocity is changing over time. A is dV dt. All right. So part B, uh, B2. Okay, let's look at B1 first because there's a graph ahead of you. Okay, let's look at the scenario given. A car of mass 1,005 kg travels along a straight horizontal road. Very nice. The variation with time t of the displacement of the car is shown in this nice, large, beautiful graph behind me. Wow, so big. So big. Okay, anyway. Use the graph to describe qualitatively the velocity of the car during the first six seconds of the motion give reasons for your answer. So you not only need to describe what is happening, you also need to explain why the justification, the reason behind why you say the velocity is increasing or decreasing or constant. Okay, so when you see the term qualitative, is you're going to use words. So words like increase, decrease, constant. So the good thing about physics is that when we look at physical quantities, they're either increasing, decreasing, or constant, right? So there's no like weird bombastic terms to use, but you need to be able to evaluate properly from the graph, all right? And what are we describing? We are describing velocity. Okay, this question is three marks, so let us look at the graph. For velocity, we are trying to relate V to the displacement graph. Okay, so immediately, if you remember the definition that we did a few minutes ago, V is equal to dx dt. So this means you want to talk about velocity, it will be the rate of change of displacement. X and S interchangeable, sometimes we use X, sometimes we use S. All right, so this will be gradient. Gradient of my xt graph. Okay, so if I look at this graph, okay, they say they want me to describe the velocity for the first six seconds. So it's for the entire duration of the graph. All right, so let's start first by looking at the beginning portion, the initial portion. So maybe if you have a ruler, this would be much more easier. I don't have a ruler. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a highlighter and I will draw a straight line along the initial part, where t equal to zero. So this one looks somewhat straight-ish. I'll try to make it as parallel as possible. Okay. So you will notice that when you reach a point somewhere here, the line begin to curve. Okay. So the initial gradient is constant, maybe until here, maybe until about two seconds or 2.5 seconds, somewhere there. So I will say, I think I'm confident to say from zero to two seconds, the, the line is straight. So this part here, here to here, gradient constant. And because of that, we can deduce that the velocity is constant. Okay, so that will be the first point. Let me go down here and write number one. The initial gradient of the graph is constant. 
And because the initial gradient is constant, you can say the initial velocity is constant. First mark. Okay, let's look at the middle section, the center, center part. Let's see. This part here doesn't look very constant to me. Leh. You see, it's curving. Okay, sorry, sorry, curve like curving. Okay, because it is curving, all right, this part, this part here, this part here is curving. So when it's curving, right, you need to check whether the gradient is increasing or decreasing. You look at the graph, the graph is getting less and less steep, right? So I guess from here to here, I'm just going to roughly draw somewhere from here to here, your middle section. The gradient is decreasing. Okay. Decreases. So velocity also decreases. I'll write that down there. Number two. Okay. Um, you can say at the middle section or the middle portion. I guess you could also give time if you want to. Maybe I'll say somewhere between 2.5 to 4.5 seconds. This is just estimates, okay? To 4.5 seconds. The gradient decreases. And because of this, velocity of the car decreases. Okay? So this kind of uh, decreasing gradient you should be able to tell just by looking at the graph but what happens after that okay after that decreasing gradient okay, let me change and draw and see whether this one is straight or not so if you have a ruler it'll be pretty easy to tell whether it's straight or not but since i do not possess a ruler on one note so the best i can do is i can draw a straight line like this green color highlighter to show you that this portion the line is fairly straight lah. you can see just by checking the position of the highlighter. All right, so this line is, uh, I would say, pretty straight. So this means after this, or maybe from somewhere here to here, again, it's just an estimate. Gradient is constant again. And because gradient is constant, velocity is constant. But, 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 but. Look at this gradient. This initial gradient is steeper than the final gradient. You cannot see, I zoom out a bit. Yellow color line is steeper than green color line. So the final velocity is smaller than the initial velocity. So V constant, but less than initial because the gradient is less steep. Okay, so that will be the third point. Let me write this down here. Point number three. Okay, I will say something along the lines where the last section specifically uh, 4.5 second to about 6 to 6 second. The gradient is constant again, but less than the initial gradient. And because of this, you can then conclude that the final velocity It's constant, but less than the initial velocity. Okay, so these three marks, right, is for one statement each. Okay, so if you don't uh, talk about certain points, like for example, if you didn't explain all, you just say velocity constant, uh, decrease, and then constant again, you will get one mark. Because you didn't explain. Ma. So make sure every statement is paired with an explanation. So if you say velocity is constant, then this is because gradient is constant. So each statement is one mark. Of course, the third mark is hard to, harder to get a bit because you need to compare the final velocity and the initial velocity. Constant, but less than. All right. So that's it. Just make sure you know whether to write increase, decrease, constant. Check out the gradient. Okay, next part, we are going to look at some calculation. Okay, B part two. Calculate the average velocity during the time interval of uh, 0 and 1.5 seconds. Okay, so I'm going to now go back to the graph. 
I'm back at the graph, 0 to 1.5 second. The good thing about 0 to 1.5 second is that this is a straight line. So to find gradient of a straight line, I just need one coordinate since it passes through the origin. Okay, so since they want 1.5, I'm going to plot out 1.5. 1.5 is here. Okay, so I will extrapolate. Of course, this is uh, much more easier if you really have a ruler. Okay, and it looks like uh, two and a half boxes here. Right, if I extrapolate this graph. So this one is 45. So if I want to find the velocity, I will take gradient, which is 45, divided by 1.5. So V is equal to 45 over 1.5. You show working law, 30 meter per second. One mark. Pretty good. Part two. Show that the average acceleration between 1.5 and 4 is negative 7.2. Okay, so to find acceleration, of course, normally we would think of looking for gradient. But if you remember the graph, or the graph gradient keeps changing. Left. So the gradient at 1.5 and the gradient at 4.0 is not the same gradient. In fact, 1.5 will be different than 1.6 will be different than 1.7. But because they want us to find average, so it's very straightforward. You just take the initial, you take the final. That's the difference that we are looking at. So all the in-between one is not, co not considered in average. So I will take the change in velocity divided by the time taken. So um, this means I need to find the velocity at 4.0 second minus the velocity at 1.5 second divided by 4.0 minus 1.5. The good news is I already know the velocity at 1.5 second. This 30 meter per second is the velocity at that particular time. So now I just need to find the velocity at 4 seconds. This means I have to revisit my graph. Okay, we're back at the graph. So we are talking at looking at 4 seconds. And 4 seconds is here. So I'm going to extrapolate up here. I'm looking for the gradient at this point. Okay, so let me let me delete some of the highlight first so you can see a bit clearly. Okay, so let's consider how can we find the gradient of the graph at this uh, at this particular plot point. Okay, at time is equal to four seconds. So your first option is you could draw a tangent. You draw a tangent, but uh, I think that is actually part of the straight line already, somewhere there lah. Okay. I can consider it as part of the straight line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, look at this triangle here. I will take this coordinate to this coordinate, okay, and find the gradient of this green color highlighted line. So this coordinate here, let me delete a bit so we can see a bit clearly. This coordinate here is 4.0, plot here. You want to draw a tangent line also can, but uh. It's almost impossible for me to draw a tangent line here. And then you give me a ruler and a paper, I can. This one is a bit hard. Okay, just cut me a break. So here would be something like uh, 98, right? One box underneath, so it's 98. And this point here will be 6.0 second. It looks like one box above. So one box is 2. Uh, so this will be 1, 2, 2. So to find the gradient, uh, to find the velocity, I find the gradient. So I will use these two coordinate and co transfer it to the other side of the page. Right, to help us, I crop the graph a bit. Okay, we're finding the gradient of this line. So I will do 6.0 minus 4.0, and here will be 1, 2, 2 minus 98. Let's find out what this velocity at 4 seconds is. So this one would be 1, 2, 2 minus 98 divided by 2. So this is about 12 meter per second. So hence, average acceleration, I will take the final velocity, 12, minus the initial velocity, which is the larger 30, divide by the time taken, which is 4 minus 1.5. This will give me 4 minus 1.5. 
negative seven point two. Fui yo, so accurate. Hmm. Good job, me. Pat on the back. If you got this answer, pat on the back. Did you know this negative means what? Ah, well, this negative shows us that the velocity is decreasing. Which is the case when we look at our description just now, right? Oh, the velocity is decreasing. So now you calculate correct already. Look. Initial velocity is 30. And then the final velocity is smaller than the initial velocity. All right. You want to draw tangent line, Can Just draw carefully. You should get close to, but not exactly this answer. All right. Okay. Let's move on to the next part. Calculate the average force acting on the car between 1.5 to 4.0 second. So this one needs a little bit of dynamics knowledge. So if you've forgotten your Newton's law, then here's a refresher. But if you remember, you would understand that from Newton's second law, F is equal to MA. This is not Newton's second law, but it is from that law. Okay. So we can put in the mass of the car, 1,005 kg. Mistake got give. Got, 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 got. I show you, I show you. Now, at the beginning of the question, they give 1,005 already, okay? So, I'll put 1,005 here and the acceleration is negative 7.2. So, by pressing my good friend Casio, the calculator, I will get negative 10800 Newton or negative 10.8 times actually kilo Newton can or I could just put 1.08 times 10 to the power of 4 Newton. Up to you la. How many SF you want to write. I just prefer to write things in standard form. Less error prone. Okay. Let me explain a bit about the negative sign. Huh? Let's draw our car. Let's say this is our car. Okay. I'm not Miss Ellie. My drawing all very weird one. It's good enough. This is my car. Okay. And the car is traveling. Uh, it's got smoke trail. Right. So the car is traveling here. And the velocity, initial velocity was 30 meter per second. Okay. So we are taking the forward direction as positive. Normal, ma. we take left to right positive or we take the forward direction as positive. So if the car is slowing down, we know that the force must be acting in the opposite direction. If the force act, look, if, if I if my car is moving from left to right and then I pull it from left to right like that, all, of course the car will move faster. But currently your car is slowing down. So there's no way that the force have you, you there's no way that the force will act from left to right as well. Because force if force act in this direction, positive F, this means velocity increase. Le, and we know the velocity will not increase. It's not increasing. We already discussed this already. So this means your F is not in this direction. Okay, let me run. F is not in this direction. Bye-bye. And F has to be in opposite direction here. 1.08 times 10 to the power of 4. This could be friction between the wheels and the car. It could be air resistance. We will study the nature of the force later in chapter 3 and 4. But in this case, currently, the reason why the car is slowing down shows us that there is a opposing force. Okay, so that's why that opposing force have a negative sign because they are opposite direction. Remember your vectors? Okay, positive in one direction, negative will be in the opposite direction. In physics, this is very important. Don't ignore the negative. Whenever you see a negative, try to ask yourself, does it make sense? Yes. Okay, so this negative sign shows that F and V, opposite direction. And not just F and V, the acceleration or the deceleration will also be in opposite direction. A is negative 7.2 meter per second square. So F and A, F, A and V, opposite direction. Or in other words, F and A is always same direction. Okay, because look at the equation now. So this is what I mean by don't ignore the negative sign. They have an important role to play in your motion. Okay, that's it for this question. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.